We return to open session and take any action necessary as a result of discussion and immediately proceeding agenda item number eight pursuant to I will start with uh, agenda item nine E first consider an act upon an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Alice Texas establishing the rights and procedures related to contract between members of the city staff and members of the City Council including the mayor repealing an ordinance and conflict therewith and providing for said ordinance to take effect from and after its date of adoption. Council all open for discussion on agenda item 9E. There, could you speak up a little louder there? I'm sorry. I'll open for discussion on agenda item 9E. Mayor, if the council doesn't have any uh, any comments, uh, I'd like to just thank the the mayor and council uh, for having the mutual respect that uh, we need to avoid any instances uh, with the uh, this agenda item. Okay. Uh, authorize the city manager to send the notice of termination pursuant to the contract with Granado Group, but to continue to negotiate with. Ne Granado Group and others on new consulting services for the city. Thank you, Mr. Towner. So, so would you say there, uh, Mr. Towner, that uh, the way that the con contract was written that it's kind of vague and in, in, in its entirety? Uh, my feeling is that the written contract we have with Granado Group should be terminated doesn't mean we may not use him for services in the future. It's just the written contract that I'm not comfortable with. And that should be terminated at the earliest point. Again, Council, I'll ask for a motion for agenda item 9B, Granado Group, Section A. With uh, with uh, with that being said, and the recommendation, I so move that uh, a notice will be sent. Okay, we have, a, we have a motion by Mr. Escobar. All in favor? Do I have a second? I'll second. We have a second by Mr. Bertrand. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Say nay. No. Okay. On agenda item nine B, section A. I vote with the ayes. The ayes have it. And I abstain, Mayor, on that for the record. I know that. Ms. Marshall, did you get that? Yes. Okay. Okay, agenda item 9A, uh, methods to address financial options with respect to budgeting and financial matters. Council will open for discussion. If there's no discussion before we, uh, I ask for a motion. I, I would like to say a few things on uh, agenda item 9A. <clears throat> I would like to convey my points in simple terms for general understanding. As I address the council, understand that I'm also addressing myself as part of this council. I would like to take this time to recognize our staff for their commitment and dedication in providing a direction on how we will reduce expenses and increase revenues. It exemplifies true character and integrity when it comes to affecting your own quality of life. I would also like to ask the council to follow that lead by giving up the iPads and removing the feasts that we have after every meal. So today we are told that we have a deficit of over $7.2 million, but we have yet to discuss our punitive damages that would, we would also have if the natatorium is not open, either by commitment of the public or the city. We have asked the public to come up with the amount of $150 a month for the amount of $1,800 a year to the tune of $540,000. As elected officials, does our public have an obligation to us, or do we have an obligation to our public? 
As leaders, we should always be looking at ways that we can be responsible. That's why we're elected. Let's take a look at our punitive damages if the natatorium is not open, either by commitment of the public or the city. First, we'll have to pay back an Economic Development Administration, an EDA grant of $1.2 million to the state of Texas for not following through on our commitment to creating jobs by opening the natatorium. Our agreement was that we would have a civic center, a natatorium, and an amphitheater. Today, we have an natatorium. Nine months ago, Mr. Escobar and I went to Austin and pleaded with Mr. Jorge Ayala to let us designate an area in the natatorium as a civic center or a training center so that we could create those jobs. That was granted. It was also stated that we would have to come up with a plan to be able to open up the natatorium in creating these jobs. Without a date, that cannot be done. Second, we have an obligation to the landowners in which if we fail to comply, that will garnish the remaining 28 acres of the property that have a value of over uh, half a million dollars, which leaves us with still the obligation of the natatorium and no land to leverage the sale of the facility. Third, the city of Alice will have to defend itself in a lawsuit against the land developers of our city to the, ex to the tune of the extent of possibly 200 to 225 million dollars, 225 a quarter of a million dollars. So if you add the punitive damages to the deficit, it would bring us to a total of about 9.2 million dollars. So we have a choice. We can add the gap of 122 to the deficit, which puts us at 7,322,000 to open the natatorium so that we may be able to fulfill the obligations, which would be in the best interest of our city. I believe all taxpayers would want to avoid taking our deficit to over $9 million. So it makes sense to do what's best for our community, not what's best for individuals. These concerns have been brought up forward to us by our legal counsel, but it seems and we continue to ignore the importance of the issue. The difference between keeping the natatorium in idle and opening is a gap of $10,206 a month. Surely we can capture that amount in revenues when the doors are open, needless to say, would create $2.6 million in sales for our area through retail purchasing, dining, fuel purchasing, and some overnight stay at hotels, restaurants, fast food, venues, etc. Now we may say, well, this won't happen. But at present time, we're paying back $1.2 million to the state controllers for the lack of attention to the details on the request from the state by missing the grace period of three months to address an issue over no overstated funds. Now, I understand that not everything is good, but as leaders, we must find the good in everything. Is there a lack of commitment, engagement, accountability, and motivation on behalf of our leaders? Are we creating a destructive environment? Is the focus of our leaders in achieving results, or is it in being right? I believe we took an oath of office to faithfully execute the duties of office to preserve, protect, and enhance to the best of our ability. Is our leadership based on self-deception? Is our leadership in a defensive posture defending a self-justifying image against a certain group? It's not about who's right or wrong. It's about what's best for our community and our economic recovery. With that, I'll open for discussion. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you for your for your words. And uh, with all due due respect, uh, I uh, I disagree with uh, some of your uh, ideas. Uh, I'm not here, and I didn't get elected to. Uh, To look after the interest of only certain interest groups here in the city of Alice. My responsibility is that to look after the well-being of all the city of Alice. And I do not want to see us in bankruptcy court. 
and uh, if if we're not responsible in some of the actions that we take, we will probably end up with it. Uh, I just don't did not see uh, how getting more in, in debt is going to help us in any way or manner. I can see that. Uh, now, is it that Leo is not being responsible? Is it that Leo don't want that uh, natatorium open? No, I would love to see it open. Can we afford to have it open? No, sir, we can't. And it would be irresponsible to do that. Thank you. Council, any more discussion? Yeah, I would agree with Council Minister Kubata. I think that, that we came forward, the Council came forward with a good plan, and I think the community is working on that plan, and, and that's going to help secure that. I mean, we all want to see uh, the facility open, and this is a way to get the community involved, and, and I think uh, people are excited about it, and I think uh, once it gets open, some of those things can happen as far as revenue, but the way that the Council decided to, to get it open was uh, the, uh, the, I mean, the, the best way to do it. I mean, it, it, makes, it makes sense. Um, and I, I, I don't know if that's part of this agenda, but uh, I was going to make a motion on this agenda um, item A. Does anybody have anything else to say? No? Um, on agenda item A, I'd like to move that we direct the city manager to, to bring forward based on yesterday's meeting um, and some of the things we've talked about here as far as uh, the financing options and, and budgeting and our our financial deficits to bring forward the plan um, as far as uh, some of the things we spoke about expenses cutting expenses and and, and those those sort of things at our next meeting um, and I know they're working on it already but I just wanted to make it um, part of the motion to direct the manager to do that so that's my motion okay we have a motion on agenda item 9a by mr. Sparza do I have a second I'll second we have a second by mr. Beltran all in favor say aye aye, aye. any opposed say nay agenda item Motion pass. Agenda item 10, consider an act upon adjournment. Do I have a mo motion so to moved. adjourn? We have a motion by Mr. Sparza. Do I have a second by Mr. Beltran? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. We're adjourned. Thank you. Good evening.